Welcome to the News Review, I am Vina Peters. Today we will be focusing on university education in Africa. We will be examining the current rankings of African universities on a global scale and how a foundation wants to in improving these rankings. As we know, higher education plays a crucial role in shaping the future leaders and innovators of a nation. But for many young people on the continent of Africa, there are questions being asked about the quality and competitiveness of the education on offer. According to a recent report, Nigerians spent an estimated $11.6 billion on foreign education between 2019 and 2022. This is a significant investment in education, but it also highlights the lack of confidence that many Nigerians have in the quality of education available at home. Unfortunately, the rankings of African universities don't paint a promising picture. According to Times Higher Education, the University of Cape Town is the highest ranked university in Africa, but it comes in at a global ranking of 160. Meanwhile, leading institutions like University of Ibadan and the University of Lagos in Nigeria fall between 401 and 500. As of today, only three African universities are in the top 300 globally and they are all located in South Africa. While the African Heritage Foundation is determined to change this, their goal is to bring 25 African universities into the top 300 by 2030. So, how does the African Heritage Foundation plan to achieve this impressive feat in just seven years? And what impact could improving the rankings of African universities have on the continent's development? Joining me to explore these questions and more is the founder of Africa Heritage Foundation, Ambassador Tunde Adetunji. But we'll take a quick break and when we return, you get to meet the ambassador. We'll be right back. back if you're just joining it's still the news review on unilag tv do you follow us across all social media platforms at unilag on tv to watch all our previous episodes like i said earlier before i went on a break we are talking about the africa heritage foundation and how it is focusing on improving the global ranking on african universities i said that uh, we have the founder of the african heritage foundation Ambassador Tunde Adetunji, who is also a doctor of philosophy and professor of anthropology, working with UN on human resources and capacity building for sustainable development in Africa. Welcome, Ambassador Tunde. I hope I can call you that. Thank you so much. It's my <laughs> pleasure to be at your studio today. I'm delighted to be here. Okay. So, um, before we talk about um, Africa Heritage Foundation, yes. I would like to talk more about you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so from my research, you seem to be a pan-Africanist. Yes. Okay. Most of your work and achievements are centered around Africa and Africans in diaspora. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, yes. you single-handedly um, took the flag of state of the state of Georgia yes. to Addis Ababa. That's right. Now that is the Union Secretariat. Yes. Now, what motivated that? Okay. So many reasons. Okay. 
Uh, they say hope deferred make the mind sick. Hmm. But when the desire are met, it's a tree of life. Man's life can be compared to a journey, just as a journey must have a destination. So also it's necessary for one to have an aim in life without a purpose to work for, a purpose to live for, and if at worst a purpose to die for, mm. one can never be better than a brute. I took this assignment right away from the beginning of my life, the image of my people. I demonstrated it during the uh, presidency of Nelson Mandela. I mounted an exhibition, Celebrate Africa Journey Through the Ages at the Sosomani village of Stars in South Africa to Christian the release of Nelson Mandela now to actually dismantle apartheid South Africa is the last country in Africa whereby uh, they gained the independence and now see Africa now most countries have actually uh, metamorphosed from bygone empires uh, and kingdom to countries Nigeria got our independence in 1960 Mm -hmm. We have Ghana in 1957, but the struggle continues mm -hmm. when they incarcerated uh, Mandela for 27 years. Yeah. They want to release him and say, go back to your home, sit down on your table, take your cold water. No, that's not freedom. He spent 27 years. We all liberate South Africa. Nigeria played a role. I remember during that time, they, they, you have to contribute your money, your wages mm -hmm. to the dismantling of apartheid. So I thought it wise. I became an instructor in Switzerland and I work in 110 cities in 57 countries. Now that gave me the opportunity to see the, the whole world as a global village. Mm -hmm. Then I thought what I could do in my own little way to create an opportunity taking Africa to the horizon that came to my mind and I put the exhibition together and told the story of the entire 55 nation of Africa when I did that I said this is brilliant I took the same thing to the Olympics in 1996 that when people are talking about the people of Africa they are looking at them in sport in everything where are these people from let's 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 talk the story that it became the sinus of the international community. From there, let us institutionalize this particular theory so that it became a case study. Then there will be a legacy, the sustainability. Mm. Then, in America, before I traveled to the United States, we all know what the 50 states of America is. We know the city, we know everything. Nobody knows what even they were calling Africa a country. They don't know where Nigeria is. They don't know where Kenya is. They don't know where Senegal is. They don't know where DRC. They don't know even what makes South Africa region. Mm. Okay, let's educate the world that Africa is the cradle of civilization and the birth of mankind. And Africa is the culture of all cultures. Now that in my mind propelled the idea that go into the world and create a theme. Africa matters. Africa is the future. And without Africa, the world is a vacuum. Hmm. So what exactly did that achieve? Well, that, what has achieved today is that Africa is the engine room of the world in the global resources, in the emerging marketing opportunity of the world. And uh, no continent, no country, how powerful they they cannot do without africa look at china china has problem of overpopulation mm. i work in hong kong before the british released hong kong to china that was in 1999 my office is in the kowloon side now china is looking that we have overpopulation how do we manage ourselves how do we manage our economy then they were looking for answer come the answer America outsourced goods and services to America, to China. They gave them the antidote, the mm. power to see how they can now globalize, how they can now steal from the ideas. They took it. Look at China today. They plant themselves across the world and they are in charge of the world economy. Whether we like it or not, China is already holding the economy, the ace 
in, in now controlling the economy of the world. That's a challenge to the United States of America. Now, having said that, when I look at these people come over, we have the Francophone, the Anglophone, the Lusophone, the Italian that colonized Africa. What's their mission? The mission is just to scramble for Africa. That's why we have the Anglophone Africa, we have the Francophone Africa, we have the Lusophone Africa, we have the Italian controlled Africa, we have the German and the Belgians. Mm. But what are they looking for? They are looking for our resources to make their economy. Remember in my introduction, I live in Switzerland. Yes. All the 26 cantons of Switzerland from St. Maurice, Arosa, Davos, Davos Plus, St. Margaretine, Soloton, Lugano. I live there. I developed the 26 cantons. I'm in Nigeria from Africa. And taking all the theory and the didactics, the methodology of how they, they strengthen their economy, and I'm teaching that. I speak German, I speak French, I speak English. Then they use me and said, well, if they use me to achieve this, the knowledge I gained from here, let me transform it to redesign the status quo of my own heritage, my own continent, my own country, my own people, mm. so that there will be a sustainable development. We want to be seen as people that are living but not existing. <laughs> Okay, so quickly, let's talk about um, the yes. foundation. Yes. Okay, so what is this all, all about? What is the Africa Heritage Foundation all about? The Africa Heritage Foundation. That's a good question. People name foundation to buttress their names, to promote their ego. I don't go that way. Okay. I look at the continent of Africa. What is happening to Nigeria is happening to Kenya. What is happening to South Africa is happening to Senegal. Okay. What is happening to Morocco or Egypt is happening to Kivad or DRC or, or Uganda or Ethiopia. Let us now brand Africa into a continent of possibilities. Let's now proclaiming, now promoting Africa matters to the world. Then I form a foundation. With that, I went into the university to institutionalize the value of Africa. That if people don't know what the value of Africa is, Africa is the cradle of civilization and the birth of mankind. Anything that is done in the world today starts from Africa. Mm -hmm. The university education starts with uh, Zankore University in Timbuktu. That's where we have Mansa, Mansa, Musa, Sundiata, and all of them. Do look at the theory where you still do the research, the peer review, and the archaeological aspect brought what is happening. How do they go into education? It starts in Timbuktu, San Kore University. Now we can have the best university that Carnegie Mellon University, like Stanford University in the world today. But where does the education start? It starts in Africa. Now said to me, we have a job. If people of my own generation cannot redesign the status quo, cannot change the narrative, then Africa will be no more. We will have either Asian Africa or European Africa in the next century. I want to be a think tank. I saw what legacy that Martin Luther King laid in the area of civil rights. I saw what uh, legacy Nelson Mandela lay in the area of this man in apartheid. I saw what Maslow in the area of needs and want. I want to propose a theory that from brain dream we should gra graduate to brain gain. Mm. It is by then we will transform ourselves as a people, our area as a as a, a country, as a country, our continent as a continent of envy that the war with Akle. And that's exactly the major thing is to bridge the gap and build the bridge between the indigenous, the intimate and the distant Africans. Hmm. Okay now so you say um the foundation now intends to bridge the gap. Yes. And it also intends to improve um African universities ranking globally. Yeah. Yes. Now was there a specific event that made you think okay let's do this. Yes. Absolutely. 
when I went to the Olympics in 1996, one of the major events that sprang up is that people don't know more about who Africa and what Africa is. Let us now explain to the international community, but well, I'm looking for an avenue, an opportunity whereby people will listen to my sermon, mm. <laughs> to my theory. Then I picked the Olympics. I was in Atlanta in 1996. Chioma Ajua won. <laughs> this, this lady is, I think it's a police officer or something. Chioma Ajua who won the gold. He, she, I jump, you know, the long jump. In the Olympics, they will give you three, maybe three attempts to prove your best. This lady jumped only once. The official said, ah, please go and sit down. You already won the gold. Other people are competing, they are competing. They never beat Chioma Ajua. Our boys uh, went to the Olympics. I was in there in the University Stadium in uh, Athens. They won the gold. That's when we have Kanu Wanku and um, JJ, Ococha. Or JJ Ococha and all of them. They beat Brazil, they beat Argentina, they beat everybody. I was there right away at the last stadium. I was very proud. Now we are proving who we are. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not enough. I think Jim Ugobodo was the Minister of uh, Sport by then. Alajari Adijuma was the Chairman of IOC. I run a museum for Africa, the best in Africa on Ikorodu Road. It's called Aragon Gallery. And some of these people that create works. Now, I look at them and I put a, put a proposal together. Sports and culture are inseparable. Now, with that team, I went to the Olympics to prove a point. So when they watch Chioma Juan, when they work uh, Yokocha and when they work Kanu Wanku, where are these guys coming from? Who are they? Let's trace their, their origin. Then the, um, the ambassador of Nigeria is called Azam, Azam Adamu. He came from Washington. Then they gave me Africa House, very close to Marriott Marquis, to, to start exhibition. From there begin the story. When they leave the Olympic Village, they come to the Africa House. <laughs> then the lecture begins. They tell me what is Nigeria. Tell me what is Senegal. Tell me what is Congo. Tell me what is uh, South Africa. Tell me what is Lesotho. Tell me what is Ethiopia. Then I became an institution. Then there is a group called the 100 Black Men of America. It's a big association. They came over every minute to my lecture. I don't know what they are trying to do. So after the Olympics, <laughs> they said, man, you're not leaving. You're not going to anywhere. I said, what? I'm going back to my country. No, you have to go from one house to the other in America, from one institution to the other. We want to learn about this. We want to know more because this is who we are. The story begins. Then institution continue to call me. I became a lecturer at Clark Atlanta University, Kennesaw State University, University of Georgia, Georgia State University, University of Chicago. All of them call me one way or the other. Then I find it very tough. CNN came, they come with the idea, want to know more and learn more about Africa. I say, yes, it's possible that I am here. What can you do in order to globalize what Africa is? This where we are ready because we are beginning to know the real facts. That was all the whole thing. Now, my ideology is to institutionalize mm -hmm. Africa and make it a case study for the generation and generation to come. It works. Because okay. today, anybody that hear about Africa, they value Africa like this. America has a lot of rethinking because they did not really grab Africa when it's necessary. Mm. Liberia is the only ally of America in Africa. Mm. And Liberia was doing well because all the governor that run, officiate and rule uh, Liberia came from the United States. But look at what Liberia really became during the time of uh, Samuel Doe and uh, all other people 
that ruled uh, Liberia. But now is now the, China, the time of the Chinese. They came with the dangling the carrot. But they are now proposing Africa economic slavery, mm -hmm. not development. Mm -hmm. Not development at all. The length and breadth of Africa is now looking at Chinese. The Chinese are evacuating the resources of Africa to China. Mm. They are bringing back to sell our own resources back to us because we are the emerging market of the world. So where are we going? The entire Africa need to rethink now. Our politicians need to rethink now. They are living in brain drain because going to take a, a loan from IMF, from World Bank, from all this, you don't need to do that. Use what you have to get what you need. Treat ourselves very well. Don't look at yourself as the opportunist that God has given to parade money. No, we don't need your money. We don't need your houses. We don't need your popularity. We need you to invest in the interest of the generation and generation and generation to come. That's what I stand for. Okay, so we'll take a quick break and when we return, we will be talking about the Memorandum of Understanding that was signed with Anchor University. Don't go anywhere. Welcome guys. Um, we're still talking with Ambassador Tunde Ade Tunji. Okay, so before I went on a break, I said we're going to talk about the Memorandum of Understanding that was signed with Anko University. Absolutely. So, what were the details exactly okay. in that Memorandum of Understanding? Yes, ever before the Memorandum of Understanding, in your introduction, yes. you serialize some of the unique university and the mm. standard in the world. The only university we can talk about is uh, in South Africa, University of Cape Town. But they still do measure to the standard of Carnegie Mellon University or Stanford University. I've been there, I saw the standard. I've been to Kyoto University in Tokyo, the University of Puerto Rico, Rio de Janeiro University, and, uh, and all those universities, Harvard and everything. I saw exactly what they are doing, okay. the center of excellence. Now, we were looking for, when I joined the United Nations on DESA on sustainable development for the year 2030, mm. part of my theory is, let us take the education of Africa to the highest of its calling. How do we do that? Until when we look at the standard of other universities, institutions in the world, and commensurate that with the standard of what we have right here, we are not doing anything. Then, having lectured in several universities and having seen what you're doing, it's not a rocket science, it's the mindset. And I want to do the same thing for Africa. Then I said to me, to achieve sustainable development by the year 2030, as promoted by the UN, we need to start with our institution. These are the people that will now take us from the parking lot to the palace of education, of sustainable development, of human resources and capacity building, mm. of living. Then I said, okay, I will invest interest with my foundation in building a coalition of within the universities. So put them in the circle of now uniting them together so that we can have student exchange program faculty exchange program, train the trainer program, then exhibition, international relations, different program, different uh, uh, teaching, different lecturing, and also creating an ambience of a global initiative that will make us to rub our heart, our mind together, our shoulder together, then the talents, the creativity, the skill of these young folks, they will live their dream. That was how my life is to invest my knowledge, my legacy into education and bring the generation that will sustain us. Okay, as um, a University of Lagos alumni, yes. I am curious. Yes. 
Why Angkor University? Oh, good question. University institution always exist with the help of the philanthropist and with the help of the organizations. The federal universities, they saddle themselves into federal regulations. Mm. And uh, institutions like Unilag, University of Ibadan, we look at them as the, uh, the cradle of university institutions in Nigeria for their failing. Why will ASU and the government have torso and throw our students out for almost a year? Mm. You can lose money and get it back. When you lose time, you cannot get it back. And when you lose mind, nobody is existing again. They create uncertainty to our education. They create an ambiguous solution that can never be solved to our society. They create imminent problems to leadership of this country by doing that. Then, when we don't have students that can sustain the ideology of the founding father of this nation, I'm talking of the founding father, talking about Obafemi Awulowo, talking about Zik, Namdi Azikwe, talking of, about Abuba uh, Katafabali, they did their best at their time. But look at the air, uh, look at the standard now. Is it growing or is it falling? So are you trying to say that neither federal universities or state universities will benefit from your they foundation? Will, they will benefit if they reverse from brain drain into brain gain. Let me break it down. The federal university is the institution that we first of all look into. But when we see the bureaucracy uh, of managing federal university, it's chaos. You want to propose something here, they say take it to the federal level and discuss. Oh no, it has to be here. No. We want something to be managed, to be guided by the right people who will do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Unilag, Unilag is a very good university where we want to do something, mm -hmm. but let us demonstrate with the faith-based initiative, the private initiative, that we will be able to see transparency. We'll be able to see how they manage uh, what they have and bring result. That's why we start with So Ankara if given University. the opportunity, you guys will actually have a collaboration and partnership? Of course. Why not? We are ready. Mm -hmm. I talked to the authority of, uh, of uh, Unilag. We're ready. This is a good university whereby we want this to be the, 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 the center of thinking whereby people we want to do something in the continent let's go to the university let's look at the think tank let's look at the people the philosopher that we take in the next 10 years 20 years this is what this where this country is going to and uh, take it or leave it for me mm. when you propose a, 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 a program here is a checks and balances that's what is happening outside there even your university your television here it's different from commercial you know, television because you, you come into the core of reality. You say it as it is. You're not, you know, faking anything. This is where they should come. Or in other area of human endeavor, university should be the center of excellence for everything. And if we can see that, why not? The world is open. The opportunity is there. So we are ready. Unilag, here we are. Okay, so let's talk about funding. Yes. Because um, we know that to achieve what you're talking about, you're going to spend a whole lot of money. Absolutely. So how do you intend to go about it? Well, I made it in my statement. University institutions are supported and guided and funded by organizations all over the world. Philanthropists all over the world. Individuals that have amassed money. Mm. Alumni. The alumni of this university alone can take this university to any anywhere because they are they are successful people all over the world. But who we gather them together 
I we gather them together. And uh, when we do that, the purpose of doing that is to now create a center of excellence. Some of them could be champions of industry, could be president of a country, could be a minister in the World Bank and everything. But where is their nucleus? If this university does not bring them up, will they be where they are? Give back to the community. Let me do, do, make, a, make a kind of uh, analysis. We are parents. We give back to our children. When the children is going to school, it's your responsibility. When he's doing this, it's your responsibility. Now, your children that now become a world star, mm. will he forget you? No. Will he? Look at uh, Messi. He won the World Cup. He went to his mother and said, Mama, you, you did well for me. Because, look at that. That instant will all, will all be there. The same thing should happen. When you look at the, 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 the list of the alumni of this university, they are all over, the, they are leaders in the world. You may not even know them where they are, but their work resonates. Mm -hmm. So, I will get the money, I will get the money, and I want to get the money, and they use it well for that purpose. That's where we are. Aside, aside funding, yes. what other challenges could you possibly encounter in order to achieve this goal? The, part, the ch challenges that we encounter, number one, is the area of accountability, is the area of transparency, mm. is the area of sincerity and honesty, because it's only a teamwork that can make the dream work. There are three kinds of people, those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those that wonder why and how it happens. Mm. In, Part of my job at the UN is to moderate program Africa solutions to Africa problems. If we do not solve our own problem ourselves, nobody is going to solve it for us. So let's start charity begins at home. The problem we encounter is the area of sincerity and transparency. I don't need to be here all the time. My only is just to make a phone call. The grant is coming. The project is coming. This particular program is coming. The people on the ground knows exactly what to do and they deliver. Hmm. Once you have that trust, things will go well. Hmm. We don't want people to sabotage. We don't want people to politicize. We don't want people to manipulate. Because we are not doing it for ourselves. We are doing it for the future of the generation of this country. And Mind you, you can only become more successful when you help others to be successful. Hmm, that's, that's very true. That's very Bearing that in mind, um, I know you have done a whole lot of work yes. with um, Africans in um, diaspora. Yes. So what role do they contribute in improving African university rankings globally? Well, this is a very tall other question, and I, li I like, I appreciate you ask these questions. Many people that left the shore of Africa, different people get abroad to the diaspora through different means. And uh, the, first, the first objective is for them to secure their life, to secure uh, their well-being. But beside that, I always tell them, Without heritage, there is no horizon. Mm. You may leave the shore of Africa looking for greener pasture, but you already have greener pasture in you. Develop that greener pasture in you. The, a, it's a tall order now to galvanize and also to make some of them realize that even though the situation that takes you abroad may not be as good as you want it, but you already got a bro. Make the best out of the situation and come back to realization that you might have to remember. I want it to be out of Africa, back to Africa. Hmm. But it's tough. That is one of the assignments I put myself in. This is the 48th year anniversary, but I'm very successful because everywhere I speak, people want to listen. And everywhere I see, they now realize, yes, to be honest with you, let me say this in this station today, the best president that will rule Nigeria 
is coming from the diaspora. Hmm. The best president that will rule and liberate Africa, not only Nigeria, is coming from the diaspora. I call what is going on rumble in the jungle. Hmm. What is going on right now is rumble in the jungle in the sense that if you don't have big money, big name, I cannot parade yourself. You cannot, people will not know. The world is changing. Give an example. I was actually a witness when President Obama wanted to become the president of America in 2008. I know him very well. He was a senator in Chicago. He came to Atlanta and he said, in the convention, I want to become the president of America. The civil rights people look at him. What is this man saying? Who is he? Who knows him? His father is not in the civil rights. He doesn't have big oil globe well like in the bush of trans transition of you understand what I'm saying? And uh, no, no 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 legacy of presidency. You better stop your mouth so that when they hear your name, you will not spoil your name. The people will not want you see, I want to become the president of America. <sighs> hmm. the, the the race became Hillary Clinton was the wife was with the or the first lady under President Clinton. And everybody said, yes, this is the next president. But people that saw the talent in Obama say, yes, this man is talking reality. How do we support him? How do we make him to become what he wants to? Obama was one of the best presidents in America today. Sure. Uh, people listen to him because he has what we call wisdom and understanding. That's what we need. That's what we need. You don't need to have a bag of money before you command the attention of the people. I speak in any country, they invite me. Who am I? Just a young man, somebody who was who was raised in Lagos, who lived in the Paja, who go through the ghost, the traffic of Todd Miller. He's speaking and people are listening. Why not? But I'm not speaking for myself, I'm speaking for my people. Mm. That's why I want it. So it's a revelation that those who will re redesign the status quo of this country, they live in the diaspora because they have they have sacrificed themselves, they have drilled themselves, they have seen what is done in the world arena, mm -hmm. then they want to, it to happen in their country. So give them some time. Give the little chance to what is going on. Let the people who have the opportunity rethink that, hey, it is not a revolution that is coming, it is a renaissance that is coming to change us, I mentioned the, the, the ideology from parking lot to the palace, mm. from bus to Bentley. Mm. When all those things happen, our generation, our children will benefit from it. I want my generation to come, our children to come, to even live bigger and transform. Look at um, the lady that won the world uh, Athletics or something, mm. what is what they call a name. I was amazed when I saw Nigeria winning laying uh, the world record on is it three on them um, hurdles? Hurdles, yes, but it's determined. You look at it, the colleagues say, Yes, I am here with authority, audacity mm. to, and she did. She did. I'm just seeing her for example. Look at that musician today. What, what is called um, the Boma Boma boy or something? Boma boy. Boma boy. He came to Los Angeles and when he said, dance like this, people dance like that. Do this. And the world is commanding the attention of the world. What do we need again? When our politicians are seeing that, that these people are laying the president, they are such an example. Why don't we change? Change from our own attitude. You know, integrity, without integrity, nothing works. Mm. And that's what we need in our leadership. Mm. In my center in the university, there will be a course, a, a, a program that anybody that wants to lead, being you in the House, in the Senate, in the representative, you have to come for an induction course, maybe about three months. How to manage people, how to manage agenda, how to manage issues. 
you could be a successful man maybe a businessman a doctor a lawyer but you are not in the legislative process mm. why don't you go through the routine get a certificate and the university will be checks and balances you going there <laughs> if you mess up we tell the people you're not going to get second chance and the second chance people will not vote for you mm. so you will be the referee <laughs> you you will be the umpire let's give this one a red card let's give this a yellow card mm. that is when we are talking hmm. earlier you mentioned um exchange programs you mentioned um faculty exchange yes so how is that going to help improve rankings of african universities globally good question again you see um there is a standard set up to actually aggregate the universities mm. when we have exchange program the idea of exchange program is for you to come with your knowledge in part with mine and we exchange ideas i learn from you you learn from me mm. when that starts happening we don't have a local students again we have international students True. who we perform to the standard when we have faculty exchange program the way they did jump here the way they did the exam here and so on so forth may not be the routine over there he learned then we have research program they study what you're doing here they learn from it they bring their own you rub minds together you will see a lot of changes a lot of changes okay and when that starts happening we are aiming into excellence mm. and when we see that happening we are transforming and that's why it's faculty exchange program so um student exchange program international study abroad program okay. projects international program and all those will start happening then science and technology take preeminence mm. because without science and technology we are going nowhere look at when covid happened the world is running elder skater but they now saddle their interest on who had to this to to, to to design the vaccine the current scientists let me tell you today the best scientists the cdc have is from cameroon hmm. from cameroon and i met dr freeding he said you know you guys you are brilliant but you don't know the value of who you are hmm. Africa is talking to Africa Africa should be going to the NASA in the next century because that's where the world is going what is the standard over there should be this the, 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 the standard right here and we cannot exclude that because we are living living in a global community the world is a global village and if we are already doing it there and making it happen in the developed country why don't we use it to transform our, where we are mm. agroeconomy is coming we don't need to depend on oil alone there are so many you know america being america they depend on so many sources of economy people now struggling to now uninterrupted 24 hours life that is a mandate for this country mm why can't our government do that why can't you stand with the government developed country hey you want to me to help you you want to sell your market help me to establish uninterrupted 24 hours that's what i will need for my people put your feet down they will do it because they know what they are getting from you don't go into any developed country you're looking for loan tell them you have more but tell them how they will now improve i'm planning to make nigeria the center point for the entire west africa country mm. i'm planning to make rwanda the center point for the entire central africa country i'm planning to make morocco the entire center point for north africa region and i'm planning for south for south africa region to make south africa the entire center point for south africa region five of these universities will be in africa whereby we train people 
with intellectualism for what they need to do. These are the people with IQ who, who, who think beyond. When we have that, Africa will command the interests of the international community. When our worst fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are too powerful beyond measure. But we ask ourselves, who are you to be visionary? Who are you to be uh, there to be uh, to, to be talented? Who are you not to be? We are all children of God. Yeah. Our playing small does not really matter, so that other people around us will not feel intimidated. As we liberate ourselves from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Thank you so much. So it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So that's how far we can go on the show for today. I appreciate because our you. time is already against us. I appreciate you having me today and uh, hope the fight again, make the mindset when the desire are met, it becomes a tree of life. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. So that's our show for today. Remember, do follow us across all our social media platforms at Unilag on TV. Remember, subscribe, like, and comment. My name is Vina Peters. Bye for now.